Texas is a really, really paleontologically diverse place. We have deposits spanning just a few thousand years old, all the way back through deposits many hundreds of millions of years old. And so if you're a paleontologist, Texas is a wonderful place because you're going to find bits and pieces of something that you're, you're interested in, is, rela is related to something you're interested in, rocks of the right age and rocks of the right kind. And so uh, it's really a wonderful, rich place to be a paleontologist. This past summer, in summer of 2014, the Perot Museum uh, came into possession of a really complete and wonderfully preserved mammoth skeleton. The mammoth was found by the landowners that owned a, a, a sand and gravel company as they were digging out uh, sand, gravel, clay, soil, and stuff like that that they then sell to various uh, customers. And one day, the fellow who uh, was operating the backhoe, the big excavators, went down and scooped something up, and the guy who ran the dump truck spotted something unusual in the sand, something very different. And so he jumped down and stopped the backhoe driver and said, no, no, stop, stop, stop. And they went down there and looked, and they started excavating what they found, and the first thing they found was a tusk. And then from there, they went out and found more and more bits and pieces and realized they had something more than just uh, one single little scrawny tusk. The purpose of Mammoth Lab is to get the bones of our mammoth that we acquired this past summer cleaned off, hardened, stabilized, and preserved. Get them in a condition where they will last for many, many decades to come. Because these things are very, very fragile. They're not mineralized. They haven't been fossilized. They haven't been turned into rock. These are still simply 20, 40, maybe 60,000 year old dried up mammoth bones. So they're really delicate. and We have to spend a lot of time hardening them up gluing broken parts back together and to do that we need a lot of room these are big pieces and many of the big chunks we have in the other room we're actually leaving together right now to preserve their association to show how they're all connected to one another this is significant to paleontology here in texas because of the completeness of this specimen mammoths are actually pretty common fossils in texas they evidently they really like texas we find the remains all across the state in deposits of all sorts of different places and mostly though you just find them in bits and pieces you find a chunk of a tusk here some bones here some bones there because most of the time you take an animal and it dies in the wild it gets eaten things scavenge it things tear the skeleton apart it sits on the surface for the while it gets weathered eroded it rots away there's almost nothing left but a few bits and pieces and scraps that didn't happen with this one and so it tells an interesting story about, uh, it's a puzzle for us, how do you get an entire mammoth quickly buried and preserved so wonderfully like this and so completely. And so uh, anytime you get a specimen that's that intact and that well preserved, it's an important specimen. Uh, what does it tell about the story for Texas as a whole? It gives us a better glimpse of life in the past here. It tells us about what the North, Tex North Central Texas area was like. Why were there so many mammoths? What were the conditions in which this animal lived? Why did they thrive so successfully all across North America, especially here, and then 10,000 years ago, they vanished. They left no descendants. How could such wonderfully adapted and successful animals here in North America vanish completely, so quickly? That's an important question because the same processes that occurred in the past are the same processes that occur today in nature. And so if those animals could be wiped out to extinction in a blink of an eye, geologically speaking, so can lots of animals and organisms that are alive today, including us. So we need to understand what happens to these sorts of animals to understand what could happen to us and other organisms on our planet today.